Hello everyone, do you hear me? Okay, perfect. So last session, we started exploring ideas beyond uh, convolution, and most of them had to do with one form or, an, or another of attention, maybe across space, across channel, or across both of them. And then we also introduced the ideas of data augmentation, in particular, random erasing, which is really effective. Any questions about those four topics? Okay, perfect. Uh, I guess we can move on to three other ideas, in particular, uh, neural ODs, spatial transformer networks, and dynamic routing between capsules. So today we are gonna cover those three. Uh, and again, the idea is these three papers are not pushing the state of the art yet in terms of image net classification. Maybe they do at some point, maybe they don't, but they have a bright future. So they have pretty nice ideas that might even be applicable to domains beyond image classification. And let's see why. Let's start with neural ordinary differential equations. And let's take a look at a residual connection. For now, let's focus on residual networks. We saw the idea before. It was age from the previous layer plus a nonlinearity applied onto the previous layer is going to give you the outcome of the next layer. And that's a residual connection. And if you rename L, previously we were using the index L, H of L plus F of H of L is going to give you H of L plus one. But if you change it to be T and interpret it as time, your layers as time, then something interesting is going to show up. And then this framework, this formula, we also are going to see it in when, whenever you're doing recurrent run networks or even normalizing flows. So I'm going to introduce normalizing flows today. So don't worry about it. But all of them belong to this category. But if you look at it more closely, it looks like you are discretizing an OD. Why is that? You can say H of T plus one minus H of T divided by some delta T and that delta t in this particular case is one, so your time step is one, is gonna give you f of theta h of t. So it's as if you are discretizing an ODE of this form, and you're using Euler discretization. You're going forward, it's forward Euler. So that's an observation from this paper. And then originally, and to begin with, you want to replace any residual block in a neural network with an ODE block. That's an idea, let's just explore it. It looks a little bit exotic, but let's just explore it and see what happens. What are we gonna do? Let's say you are at time zero. This is the input to your residual block. We can solve this ODE given the initial value, initial time, and that's gonna give you the output. And you're gonna use a black box differential equation solver. For instance, it could be a Runge Yakuta solver with adaptive time steps. So you can get as fancy as you want because for differential equations, you have centuries of uh, methods to solve them. And then you can pick the best one or your favorite method, your favorite differential equation solver. But if you go back to that residual connection, it's easy to back propagate through it, but uh, can you actually back propagate through a black box differential equation solver? So that's a big question. And that's not an easy one to answer. And that's exactly what this paper is doing. It's giving you means of back propagating your errors through black box differential equations. So this is what this paper is achieving, which is impressive. You're back propagating through ODE solvers. So now what is the technology behind it and how do they achieve it? You do reverse mode automatic differentiation of ODEs. How does it work? The method is not new. You actually use that technique in scientific computing a lot. And it has been around uh, for at least half a century or more. The adjoint sensitivity method. What is that? Let's say you have a loss function. Maybe it is your cross entropy loss function in the end. Now you want to compute the derivative of your loss function with respect to your hidden states. And the hidden state is the solution of this or these. So your ODE solver is gonna give you H of T in a continuous fashion. So now you have continuously many layers within your block compared to previous ones where you had maybe one layer or two layer, depending on how deep your F is. Okay, so far so good. 
what you want to achieve is you want to find these guys, the derivative of your loss with respect to your hidden states. And that's going to be a continuous variable. It's going to be time dependent. It's going to have the same dimension as your h. h is a vector. It's a time dependent vector. So a is going to have the same dimension because l is a scalar. So a and h have the same dimensions. And let's just call that adjoint. And this is what you want to find. And the adjoint sensitivity method, which I'm not going to go into more details, is going to tell you that your A is solving an ODE. The same way that H was solving an ODE, your A is going to solve an ODE. And this is going to be your ODE. You take the derivative of your right-hand side, which is exactly what you have up there. F is a vector, by the way. It's a vector valued function. It takes as input vectors, it's going to output vectors of the same size as H. So this guy is going to end up being a matrix. The derivative of F with respect to H is going to end up being a matrix. So each component of F, you're taking its derivative with respect to each component of H. So this is a matrix. A has the same size as H. It's a vector. And now you are doing vector matrix multiplication. And in the end, after this matrix vector multiplication, you're going to end up with a vector. And that's the ODE that your derivatives is going to solve. You can refer to, to the paper. You can look at the adjoint sensitivity methods if you're interested in why this is actually true. But this is an applied deep learning course. We don't worry too much about where these formulas are coming from. We are going to try to use them. So A dot is solving an OD. Actually, A is solving an OD, and that's your OD. Okay, so far, so good. So H is solving an OD. The derivatives are solving an OD. But this derivative, this OD, you can solve it backward. Why? Because you usually know the derivative of your loss with respect to the last layer of your neural network, because that's easy to compute. Because you know your cross entropy loss with respect to, and taking that derivative with respect to the last layer is very simple. So this we usually know. And now you're solving this OD backward. But to be able to solve that OD backward, you need to know what is your H, because this formula depends on H as well. One option is to solve your ODE for H forward, get H at the last time and all of the previous times. And then this is gonna be a function of A only, and then you can just solve it. Or, but, and before I say more details, we are in the end interested in the derivative of L with respect to H at time uh, zero. So that's what you want, and that's you're gonna get out of solving this ODE. But that's the method that I just ex explained, that you keep a track of all of your H's from the beginning to the end is going to end up being really costly memory-wise. Because at each time step, you need to store your H, which is a vector, and it could, be, it could end up being really huge. So what is smart about this, about ODEs, is that you can actually solve this problem in constant memory. How? You can actually recompute H. You don't need to store it in memory. Rather than recomputing H forward, you're going to recompute it backward. So now you have a pair of ODs. You have this OD, you have this other OD. You know A at the final time. You know H at the final time. And then you recompute everything backward. Whenever you need H, the differential equation from H is going to help you. And whenever you need A, this differential equation is going to help you. And then you can solve both of them backwards. And that's how you're going to get the derivative of your loss with respect to H0 in the end. And this one, you can call your backward OD solver again. So you have a forward OD sol solver. Another OD solver is going to give you your back propagation, the derivatives. Uh, the question is, won't recomputing uh, H increase the time? So yes, you're sacrificing memory for time. But it's actually not that bad. You are just solving an ODE, which has twice the size of the previous one. So this ODE coupled with the other ODE is going to give you a single ODE with two, two times bigger the number of uh, variables. So it's actually not that bad. Does that answer your question? It's much better than storing your age. Any other questions before I move on? So I want everything to be clear. And as you can see, this is a nice technology to have at your fingertips, being able to backpropagate through ODEs and black box ODEs and black box ODE solvers. 
And in the end, not only you want to be able to backpropagate through your age, you want to be able to backpropagate with respect to your parameters, because that's in the end what you're going to keep adjusting through your loss function and the stochastic gradient descent in the end. How does that happen? This is going to end up giving you another ODE. You're going to do another ODE solve. This is again going to be backwards. And that's why you start from time capital T, you go up until time zero. This negative corresponds to that negative up there. This A is exactly that A transpose up there. Now this function, you are taking the derivative of your function with respect to the parameters instead, rather than the input. And this is just another ODE solver. And you're gonna do this backwards. And that's gonna give you the derivative of your loss with respect to your parameters. The question is how do you actually compute this? A transpose a derivative of your function with respect to H, A transpose a derivative of your function with respect to theta. These are just neural networks. Your F is a neural network. And this is just a standard automatic differentiation. So this is what PyTorch is gonna do for you or uh, TensorFlow is gonna do for you. So you don't need to worry about this. Okay? These you get for free using standard backpropagation. And this is a new backpropagation that you write the code for which is just calling your ODE solver, okay? What are the applications? One of them is you can replace your resid residual blocks with continuous depth residual blocks. And that's gonna give you continuous depth residual neural networks. And uh, let's say you have six standard residual blocks in your ResNet of this type. You can replace them with six ODEs and then uh, basically solve them forward and backward this way. You can test it on NIST. In terms of parameters, they all have similar parameters. Actually, the ODE solver, the ODE net is gonna have less parameters compared to your ResNet. You can have one layer MLP, that's your baseline. That's your error. Your ResNet is gonna have this error rate. The memory is you're gonna, in terms of layers, you're gonna have to store L vectors from one layer to the next one because when you're doing forward pass, you're gonna need them. When you're gonna do backward pass, you're gonna need them. And you're gonna be able to compute that in order of L times, because it is L steps. You're gonna have a for loop that takes the output of the previous layer as input for the next layer. Another option is to still have this ODE or ODE block in your residual neural network and you discretize it yourself. You just write down the formulas for Rangekuta. And then you can have L time steps or L tilde time steps, and you can interpret that as your number of layers. And then do a standard backpropagation. You don't need to do backpropagation through any OD solver because you just wrote down your Ranga Kuta method yourself. You expanded the terms out. You can have the OD net, which is what we have here, and you backpropagate through OD solvers. The time is gonna have the time step that you're using for your ODE solver. So whatever that your ODE solver is doing, that's gonna give you the length of your neural network, or actually it's depth if you want to interpret it that way. But then in terms of memory, it's gonna be order one. So it's a constant memory cost because you are not storing much and your storage is not changing by the layer. And then it's actually doing slightly better because you can have better ODE solvers than Rangekuta. There is a question in the chat. I just want to make sure I'm understanding this right. The ODE solve is just another way to optimize for your parameters instead of using gradient descent. No, that's not the correct understanding. To do gradient descent, you need to know your gradients. The forward and backward ODE solve that you see here, the forward one is gonna replace a residual block in your neural network. The backward solve, is actually gonna give you the gradients that you need to do gradient descent. So you're still gonna do gradient descent in the end. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. Any other questions?